Hey boys and girls, Night Stalker here. Welcome along to today's video about pikes. And this pikes for beginners, I should mention. So we're not going to talk about super advanced tactics here. We're not going to talk about team wars. We're going to talk about, you know, when you're solo queuing, you're new to the game, maybe you're under level 60, maybe you're just reaching 100 and you want to learn a bit more about the solid basics of these units. But that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, so what, what is a pike? We just want to define it because we're not talking pole arms here. We're not talking about the halberds. You know, they're slightly different and we might do those in another video later. Or they're, they're quite specialized. There's only a couple of units that are halberds. But for the pikes, we're going to define them as these guys standing behind us, right? There's a gentleman. He's an infantryman. He's got an extra long thing. We're going to call that a pike just for the sake of argument. And the types of pikemen, there's really kind of three, isn't there? There's the big blocks of pikemen. There's the, the loose pikemen that fight in loose formation and possibly even have a charge. And then there's the third, the ultimate pikes that everybody uh, can be working towards that are just, I don't know, they're bordering on OP, you know, the Imperial pikemen. They have their advance, their advancing pikes. And although they're an advanced unit, I'm going to talk about them a little bit today because they're really the, the crux of the, the pike units. And so are the Fortabrachios. They're a tier, uh, season three um, special unit. You can get through through those um, challenge trees. But you can't really talk about pikes without talking about those two specifically because they are, the, the Imperial pikes are super dominant in the game and the Fortabrachios have a very strong place in the anti-cavalry meta. So we're going to touch on them. We're not going to spend a lot of time. Today we're talking about pikes basics. So let's go on over to the training room. And get started over there. All right, welcome back to the training room. You can see we teleported here in a blink of an eye. I might do a video on that later, how to do teleport magic. But for now, we're going to stick to pikes. Uh, the training room right now, we're going to talk about the block pikes first. So that's uh, what I define as um, any unit that stays stationary in a formation and braces their pikes against uh, incoming charges or enemies. There are other things you can do other than brace as well and wait. Uh, we can push in and, and drop our pikes down as well, but we'll learn how to do that in a minute. Um, so the types of pike that will be available to you to do this are the village watchmen. And although they don't say they're pikes, they work very like pikes. Uh, I'll use them first and show you what I mean. They have a, a semi-brace formation and they have the same sort of mechanics. Uh, pike militia, who are an absolutely wonderful unit that absolutely everybody should get. They're the only green tier. Uh, that I can think of right at the second, that have a chance to beat anything in the game. They're great. Domain Pikemen, uh, they're actually quite a popular unit. They have some good damage. Uh, they don't have a shield like all the other pikes, and being low level, they tend to get dead pretty quick. And Fortabrachio, who are the king of anti-cav brace. Uh, they're a season three um, challenge unit, and I'll briefly touch on how to get them later. This is something you can work up to. It's not something you're going to get at the start of the game. They're quite difficult to get unless you're going to pay a bunch of money. All right, here we go with our elite watchman. I love this this unit, absolutely love it. So, first thing we're going to do to show you the unit mechanics is we're going to drop into our formation. Now you'll see the watchmen have already already back braced. Now I can't see anything in the watchman about how this is a brace, but it seems to work exactly the same way. So I highly recommend. Now the idea of this brace in the formation is to get as many people shoulder to shoulder to do as much damage in a smaller frontage as possible. And as you can see, that's quite effective for a 30 leadership unit. Now when you've got these last little ratty guys around, just one or two of them left, hit that V key and destroy them. Now even though this is the training room, you'd expect a 30 leadership unit to take more damage, right? Let's see how they do in an open formation. Now this is how you fight with the open formations. You move them past the unit you're fighting, and when they're in amongst, you hit the attack key. And with their long reach and surrounding, they're going to do all sorts of meaty damage. Now, how much damage are we taking compared to those domain pikemen? Now you can move from the brace into a brace and edge them forward. Always edge them forward so you're ready. You don't want to be caught out of brace. There you go. I don't know why this chap here is not being hit. But you'll see when they get hit, they get a little stun. Which is what tells me that they work. See this guy? 
they actually work just like other pipe braces. But nobody seems to talk about it. So there you go. You heard it here probably first time for you. All you experienced players, you're going to know this already. And there's a few left. Press that V, go out of formation, and use your reach to attack them from around the sides. All right. Let's go back and get our next unit. We're going to work our way up. Next one is Domain Pipeman. Now these Domain Pipemen, to me, they're a good filler unit when you've got some spear leadership left over. Because they are still pikes, right? They still do good damage to cavalry. I mean, they tend to trade, right? They tend to die at the same time. But let's watch what happens. See that same formation that the Watchmen had? I'm convinced Watchmen are braced and, and naturally. Now they do a lot, a lot more damage than the Watchmen. 70 leadership. Everyone should have them. And one of the things that's good about them is this all-round defence. You can be attacked from any side and you're hitting a braced pike. But more importantly, when we use that same tactic that we used before with the Watchmen where we moved past the enemy unit, they're all bunched up a lot more. Slaughtered. See that? And you can move them through again and hit the attack again. Lovely. Not as much damage as in the brace. Do you notice that? But you can swarm your enemies. Let's go back and get the next unit. At some point we're going to get some archers that we have to kill. Pike Militia. Now the Pike Militia are absolute gods of the push and brace. Now because these guys have a specific brace command, number one here, see? Brace weapons. They can brace when they're in the middle of a unit, just like we were looking at before. Move past the unit. And when you're in position, hit that one and watch the enemy melt absolutely melt them. This will be more obvious when we get a um, a melee unit to fight. Right now we haven't had uh, too many of these archers, so that's good. Alright, here we go. There's some enemy domain pipe. Let's do the same thing. So we're going to move through them like we did with the open. Hit the brace and watch the unit just disintegrate. Move them again, brace them again, disintegrate. Now that's how you use militia pikemen. These are elited, they do two hits for every one, and they stun people when they hit. They're just a magic unit that absolutely everybody should get their hands on. Let's go back and get the Fortabrachios, who are the ultim oh, penultimate anti-cav unit. Here we go. Now look at this block. As you can imagine, Anything that comes into the front of these will get absolutely devastated. Now there's a bit of tip for them. Watch how we just inch them forward slightly. Inch forward, inch forward, and you're always ready. Now watch this. They're stunned, inch forward, melt. They have a very reasonable spread out attack. It's mostly useful against heroes to spread out. The wider front is not particularly wide, but we can inch them forward to continue to melt everything in front of us. It's very important to inch them forward like that. They're quite slow, and often, it seems to be almost at random, they're very slow to get those brace down. Watch. But when we're fighting like this, you inch them forwards. Melt. Inch them forward. Melt and kill the balance. This open formation with the V is very good for killing heroes. You know, it doesn't happen in a vacuum. Often you'll have a ton of units around you that are trying to kill them as well. But if you, for some reason, get attacked, when they're in this formation here, it's very common for heroes to just dive into the middle to try and kill them because they're such a dangerous unit. So if that happens and you haven't got much around you, you can straight up kill them with that V kill. Inching them. This tactic also works with the Pike Militia, where they, they benefit more from uh, just messing up against them and hitting the uh, attack key, uh, the brace key. Why is that, you ask? Let's talk about that for a minute. And why are Fortabrachios, when you've seen their damage numbers, why are they so good against cavalry? It's a very good question. Thank you, Knight. 
So, what happens when you charge a pike unit of any kind who are in brace, it uses your own momentum against you. If you charge in like this, you'll take extra damage because you're moving towards them at a reasonable speed. If you use an ult like this one, you will get dead because you're moving at a much higher rate and your momentum translates to damage if you attack pikes in the front. Now just imagine now a unit of heavy cavalry. Dum -da -da -dum. Duk -duk 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 -duk. If you're in brace, you're going to kill the cavalry because the you know 12,000 hit points or whatever it is a man has nice to get up to doesn't matter because you're going to get hit by two, three, four of these guys and they're going to get dead instantly. Often it is possible for them to get through and kill some of your guys too. But if you're going to trade these for tier five cavalry, everyone's going to be happy, right? Gold tier cavalry. You won't tra uh, translate that for a while. You, you know you won't see that as big, uh, the big gold tier cavalry. Now watch what happens if we get in amongst them and we set up our brace like this. We're not doing any damage, right? None. Why is that? What do you think that is? Let me tell you. Here's how pikes work. They do their maximum damage at the tip. So in this semicircle that they're standing in now, that is where they do their maximum damage. And the closer you get to the pike, the less and less and less and less damage it does. This is true for all pikes, not just these ones. All pikes. And when they get all close into your unit, like this, they do no damage. That happened in one of the more recent updates. So it's very important to understand that mechanic. Got to keep them moving. Keep them going. So, salient points, when you embrace you do more damage. Often you'll get a stun or multi-hits. Pikes do more damage at the tip than they do the closest to the user. Momentum is king. The faster your target is moving towards you, the more damage it will take. Let's move on to our next segment. <laughs> Teleport, back to the start. Again, I'll do that in another tutorial. Anyway, next thing we're going to talk about is the loose formation pikes. And there's a couple of different kinds. Uh, there's the direct stabby damage ones, which would be the Rattan pikemen, who also have a lovely bleed and weaken attack, and the tenant farmers here, who, okay, you might consider they're not, but they don't have a shield, they're not spearmen, they're not halberds, what are they? They're pikes, they've got pole arms. They actually do great piercing damage. There's a lot of disrespect out there for the tenant farmers, but because you can stack them in like we showed you in the last segment, and how I'll show you again, they actually do a lot of damage because they've got good reach, good armor penetration. And the third type is the charge pikes, and that would be, of course, the prefecture pike, pikemen. Uh, those are a bit of a curious case. We'll talk about those in a second. Let's see what happens when we use our farmers. They're just an oddity that you may or may not know. If you press C, your unit will follow you. If you double tap C, they'll move forward quickly towards you. Like they'll run instead of walk. That will often string them out over a long distance. So here we go, same as last time, we're going to move them inside a unit and attack. Do you see the amount of numbers there? People laugh at the tenant farmers, but they have reach and they have armour penetration. Let's do that again. Slightly harder melee unit target this time. Move through. Hit the attack button. When you do this tactic, there's a lot of them attacking at once. So you get a lot of a lot of farmers. You get uh, my build has got 36, 36 farmers. You can get them up to 40 or maybe even more. Let's have a look at the next unit. You'll notice there that we lost maybe three of an already really badly injured unit. Not bad. Don't laugh at tenant farmers. They're not as terrible as they seem. Rattan Pikes. They work in the same way. Uh, Rattan Pikes were one of the first units I got in this game because I loved how they were pikemen that had fast attack and they move really quickly. That is one of the benefits of this type of pike. They do tend to move really quickly. All three kinds do move fast. So, let's see what happens when we move these guys inside a unit. Move them in and attack. Look at those lovely bleed ticks. There's actually a weaken effect on those as well. Even against a shielded unit, 
doesn't last long. Now this works just like that, not just in the training room either. They actually get quite a good lot of kills. Um, my Rattan pikemen tend to do about as well as the pike militia. They have different uses. These guys are great for tracking down archers and things like that because they move rather quickly and you can stack them in and kill the whole unit very, very rapidly like this. Nicely murdered. So I think that's about as much as we can uh, teach you about the loose formation pikes. Let's just show you quickly what happens when a loose formation is attacked in the front. I want to talk about that briefly because you you've got to use them on the movement method. See the long ones? They tend to attack and they stay back. See how much fewer attacks we're getting? Because the unit would naturally try to move back if it can. If it's engaged up front like this it won't. But you're going to get a lot less attacks than if you move through the unit. Generally as well you'll take more losses because all the ones at the front are taking all the damage. Now that's true for all of the loose formation pikemen. Now, the last one of the loose formation pikemen we're going to talk about today is the prefecture pikes. Now these are a bit of a special case. Now, these chaps are not part of the meta at all. They fell out in about season two. And that's because they're pikes without braces. And you'll hear a lot of negative feedback about the units for pikes that don't have braces. But as I've just shown you, they can be very, very good when you know how to use them. Now, the special thing about this particular pike unit is that it has nice tight formations like this. It has the same line as everybody else. But the important one is this. Prefecture pikes have a deadly charge. And by deadly charge, I mean it kills heroes. It's not so great against units, and it's hopeless against shields. Never charge a shielded unit with this unit. But it doesn't matter how many heroes are standing in front of this unit, it will kill them all. If you place them at the top of a siege tower and a hero tries to run up, uh, then you just charge straight down the, the siege tower and you will kill that hero. It doesn't matter how tough they are, what their armor are, what their hit points, nothing. I don't care. They're going to die. And it will kill multiple heroes in a row. Now how this is particularly useful is if say you're a longbow, you put it at the bottom of the siege tower and you go up here and you go doing 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 up the ladder and you're up top going pew 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 doing your lame -o longbow wussy thing and people come and they're in here and they go ah I'm getting shot ah save me ah and they think alright I'm going to go and kill that longbow so they run up here to try and climb up the ladder and as soon as they come onto that siege tower you charge up this way and you'll kill them. It's, it's magic. A lot of fun to do. Anyway, let's see what happens when we put them against the unit. It's really important that these guys are a sniper unit. Um, I will try and find a couple of clips later where you, you just snipe off heroes with it and pull it back. Kind of like, think of them as point blank javos. Now they'll probably destroy these archers. Everything destroys archers in combat. But do you see how the charge actually did very little damage in terms of a charge unit? Very strange, right? Especially when they kill heroes dead on sight. Now, watch how little they do to this this unit. Ah, we actually have the problem of we don't have the charge ready. 13 seconds on the cooldown. So let's see what they do in the line formation. Move them through. Do the attack thing. Move them through. Do the attack thing. That, of course, being the best way to use pikemen when you're not in brace. Here we go. That's great. We've got another shield unit. Let's see what happens. The answer is very little. See that? Very little. These guys are strictly hero snipers. Never mind, we'll leave them to do that. Now we've talked about all the loose formations, and I will show you those clips of the uh, these prefecture pikemen destroying the heroes later. Let's move on to our very last type, the advance, the deadly, deadly imperial march. 
Yeah, man, I'm really good at that. Should start a YouTube channel or something. Anyway, the last one we want to talk about today is uh, the uh, Imperial Pike Guards, who are the absolute ult ultimate in pike technology. Why? Well, it's it's quite simple. It's the advance. It's absolutely lethal. Ignore this one here. This is I get this for a doctrine. I'll show you how it works in a minute anyway. But one of the unit doctrines gives them a charge, which I use to basically get them somewhere quicker because they're so slow. Back to the advance. They've got a brace, but they're known for their advance. Let's go and find out what that does. You've almost certainly seen this in a game, but you may not have understood what it was or how it works. It'll be a while before you can get Imperial Pike Guards, they're not a beginner's thing, but you can't talk about pikes without talking about Imperial Pike Guard. Here we go, they'll naturally go into a brace. Here we go. Let's see what happens when we do this. Ta-da! And that is the Imperial Pike Advance, or the Imperial March if you prefer. Let's telewarp until we've got no uh, cooldown left. We're telewarped. So, let's see what happens when we use the Advance in a different formation. This is the loose formation. I don't recommend pushing these guys in. These guys are not used in the standard way. The brace is terrible, and you do not want to be pushing them into the middle of units. Usually, when you do that open formation, you'll actually get more than in the line formation, and less will get through because of the way that they're staggered like this. Let's teleport again to the next. Another, another teleport. Such a useful skill. Now we're going to do the advance in this circular formation. It's certainly my favourite because you tend to get hit by a double line. See here? First line, second line. And everyone that gets hit will get double hit. This is especially good for absolutely destroying cavalry. You can also put them in brace once they've done their little uh, advance thing. But their brace is actually terrible. Outside of the advance, this particular unit doesn't have a lot of utility. They're not bad actually in this stabby formation. They do a little bit of damage. But really, they're all about the advance. So you tend to run in, advance them, and then pull them back out while your allies fight. Because this will knock over shield walls, it will instantly kill cavalry, anything charging at them will directly die. They just absolutely push people off the points and clear them. And I'll show you how to do that in a clip or two later on. Let's teleport again, and I'll show you another trick. Oh, we don't need to teleport. It's good, my teleport battery is getting closed. So we're going to charge in, and then we're going to do the advance. And we're going to do one one more. We're going to do this, because we're a longsword. And they'll charge, and then straight into the advance. And we've caught them all blocked up like that, and they're getting hit by this double line. Actually quite magic. So if you do get that uh, Doctrine, Doctrine ability for the charge, it's very good on these units to get them around, because they're absolutely so slow. Look at this. You can outrun them on foot, right? They're just so slow. And when people see them coming, they will target them, trust me. Alrighty, well that ends this segment. Let's move on to the next one. Bloop, teleport back to town. Alright, now we're going to take a look at the veterancy line and doctrines of these uh, units. Let's start off with the very, very basic ones. Now, most of my pikes have a theme on the same thing. Piercing damage, piercing armor penetration, um, and because they don't have a shield, I love to get some piercing defense and some health. And this was just a spare doctrine I had lying around, because once you get there, you can't, there's nothing else to add, you know what I mean? You can't add any more defense or anything like that. It was the only one I had available. So they're mostly going to be a theme on the same thing, right? See, exactly the same. These guys have got an extra, there is a doctrine out there that gives you 100 extra bracing damage. Highly recommend it. Especially on the pike militia who do double hit, right? We'll talk about that in a second. Same again. Of course, loose formation pikes are a bit different. Again, there's nothing I can add here. Just a spare slot until we get something special. But a bit of defense. Uh, these guys tend to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with swordsmen, so I tend to increase that defense instead. Bit of health because we've got no shields, and of course, straight-up damage. 
Now when we get to prefectures, you want to be doing things like reducing charge cooldown time, because that's what they're all about, the hero snipers. You can also get the doctrine um, that allows you to do an extra 100 odd damage, 95 damage to heroes, uh, but they really don't need it. If they hit a hero, they will already kill them. Fortabrecchio is a bit of a special one. So I've sunk most of my good ones into here. Extra damage while bracing, extra damage to units, uh, increased piercing damage, uh, and I've got an additional stun. So they already do have a little bit of a stun with their, um, their pikes, naturally. I wanted to increase that pain. And of course a bit of health. Again, no shields. They take a lot of extra damage from that. And of course, other babies. I haven't quite got these guys up yet. Uh, I don't play a lot of team wars, which is where they're particularly prevalent. Same deal. Lots of extra damage where possible. And of course the Epic Poem um, Doctrine 2, uh, 3, that I was telling you about where I get a charge ability. It's, it's useless as a charge to do damage, just absolutely nonsense, but it does allow you to get around the corner and into position quickly to enable you to do your advance attack. So, we'll go down to the block pikemen again. Let's start with our pike militia. Now, anything the block uh, pikemen, you definitely want to take things that boost your brace. You've got other lines that'll do, you know, Shiltron formation, which is the circle, Bit of extra damage to cavalry, that's always nice. Reduce range damage, field battles, yeah, great, blah, blah, blah. But when you come across this line, um, penetration. This one here, you definitely want the column formation, which is the one I was using in the example before. Movement speed is absolutely brilliant. Braced weapons increase armor penetration by 30%. Absolute monster. Braced weapon damage increased by 15%. And here's where it gets real funky. Every time you attack with these units, they'll hit two people. And both of those hits will stun the unit. So this is where it really should go. Anything in block formation, you want to get boosts to your um, your brace. Same with these chaps, right? Add one more target to bracing. <laughs> I'm from New Zealand, so we play on the, um, the Asian server, uh, which is not the same as my game. So we have sometimes a bit of a translation malfunction. Uh, see, bracing, 2 at extra 5%, extra 10% bracing, so we're going to get an extra 200 and whatever armor penetration. And there's another one somewhere, I'm sure of it. Yeah, another armor penetration more bracing by 10%. So, if you're going to be bracing, you want to max out the bracing. It's really what they do well. For the loose formations, um, things like the pikemen, it's just you want to go for additional damage and things. These pikemen are a bit special because they get um, uh, bonus hits. And those bonus hits slow people, and those bonus hits also poison people. Um, and of course, you can stack that poison three times. So these guys are actually pretty effective. Uh, they won't take on shield units. Be careful of that. Uh, we got any other Lucy's? Farmers, yeah, just more increased minimum damage and things like that. There, there are there are a peasant unit at the end of the day. I do like them. Uh, what do we got? Prefectures. You want to tip these guys towards attacking heroes, right? So for more soldiers and armor penetration is good, right? Critical value, blah, blah, blah. But charge armor penetration, 15%. Column formation, essential. Charge damage by 15%. Cool down the charge. Charge duration. Increases charge damage. Charge dazes enemy units. And increases charge damage by 10%. These guys absolutely slaughter heroes when they hit them. Uh, they will kill the front line of an enemy unit. Uh, which is not great when you're blocked up in that column formation. Uh, and against any sort of shield, they just bounce off them like they're just rubber bullets. And of course, the big boys. Again, it'll be a while before you get this sort of thing, especially the Fortabrachios, but it's nice to know where the end goal is. So these guys have one use. They're all about the advance. This line here is a bracing line. This line here is the advance line. And you, there's just no question. Go the advance line. You know, extra hit with a strike, uh, advancing speed increase, uh, reduces damage while advancing, critical's great. Can't be stunned by ordinary attacks while advancing, increases advancing damage, increases armor penetration. What more can you ask for? And that's what you want to do because your job is to keep cavalry off people's back or just smash back points. You know, if these guys walk across a point, anything in their way will be thrown to the floor and seriously damaged. Although, although some of the new new season units, this one, can withstand that advance, particularly the Paladins. Uh, the Stalwarts aren't bad either. 
Uh, they won't particularly die, but they will still get smashed into the floor, allowing your team to attack them. So, we've done a veterancy and doctrines. Let's move on to some examples in the real world. Woo! Teleport. Alrighty, first thing we're going to do today is look at the Pike Militia. Here's me derping around on a siege tower when I realise we're actually being attacked on the other side. And this is a perfect opportunity to use my Pike Militia. You see on the mini-map there, I've called them up to me. And here we go. Uh, we're going to move them all up in a block because they're all nice and tightly packed at the moment. We're going to hit that one key and melt everything in front of us, which is one unit. Then we're going to move them in, embrace, and melt half a unit of Conditori and half a unit of Metella Lori. Move them in, brace, melt. Move them in, brace, melt. Move them in, brace, melt. And what are we up to now? 56 kills? What an absolute savage wrecking, and that's how you use Pike Militia to maximum effect. Let's go to our next unit. Alright, here we are derping around with the longbow. I do like to play the longbow every now and then, because you can do uh, this sort of silliness. See all those archers shooting overhead? You just go and kill them with one hit. Don't need a headshot them, nothing. I'm sure if you're an expert longbow player, or a regular longbow player, you can do a lot better than I can. But anyway, what we're just kept doing is killing time until it's the right time to get our unit up and attack those guys in the back. And see how they're now suddenly pushing all up that stairs? Now's a good time. We can get all in amongst them now and use those extra long return pikes. See how we move forward and through where we intend to fight? And they've got 15% damage bonus. And look at those numbers just tick up. Of course, playing a longbow player, you've got better things to do than stand there and watch your troops. Like killing Namcans. Everyone likes a dead Namcan. Look at those damage numbers ticking up. They're currently fighting heroes and units. You know what I mean? But they're so in amongst the enemy troops that they can all attack everybody at once. And they've got those bleed ticks on, which really helps. It makes them weak. Longbow just being a longbow thing. Trying to shoot off the hero. Turn back. What are we up to? 64 kills. Still fighting two heroes. Still devastating an, another entire unit. Now, as you'll see by that kill counter, by the time all of these retards are dead, even they can't last forever, um, we're going to have 73 kills in total. You have to trust me on that. Let's move on to our next clip. Alright, so here we find ourselves duping around on the right hand side of the map in Orgolia. Now, I see this guy down here, and I'm not sure what he's doing. Maybe he's healing, maybe he's waiting for his unit to catch up. Maybe mum told him to go and clean his room and he's panicked, stuffing socks and drawers and things like that, waiting to go. Um, so while that's happening, I'm just going to go over here. Uh, when I shot this clip, I was um, I needed to do ladders as part of my challenges for the, the units and things like that. So I noticed he's come back up, and I have a secret weapon. He's like, what are these guys doing? And he's dead. If you get hit by charging pikemen, charging prefecture pikemen, you're dead. Don't care who you are. Don't care what your health is. I don't care what your armor is. I don't care if you're a longsword with mega armor and mega hit points. You're going to be dead if these prefecture pikemen get you. So it's really important to think of them as like javelins that don't have a range. They're charged javelins, if you like. You know, can they kill units? Yeah, they can kill units. That's not their primary purpose. You know, here's some some pike militia that have lost the hero. You know, can they kill them? Yeah, they'll kill them. You know, they can kill light infantry and things like that. But that's not what they're about. They're really about killing those heroes. So the A points being uh, captured here, those loyal guard that you can see in the foreground there, I can't kill them. All right, I'll charge them in the back. I'll do a little bit of damage. They'll turn around and murder me. So we're going to wait till they go away and do their own thing. Maybe they're going to call their son to clean their bedroom or something. But we see two heroes in a line here. So that works out well for uh, a charge unit like this. So here we go. We're going to try and snipe off both heroes. We kill one. But then we bounce off these Imperial Shields, or whatever they are here. So I immediately pull them back. Just like your Javelins, you don't throw them into combat without good reason. Now here's something I'm a little bit confused about. And if anyone knows why this happens, can you please let me know in the comments below? I've sent my Pikes off to kill these Archers. These Black Dragon Archers. I'm already stuck in and fighting. I hit the Fight key, and they leave the Archers alone and run back towards the hero and me. I don't know why that is. If you do, please let me know in the comments below. Now, looking at the map, there's people behind me. 
Minimap's very important. Here we go. So we're going to try and snipe off this longsword. He's facing the wrong way. He doesn't even know. Luckily for him, he turns around, sees me, it messes off to the right and just narrowly avoids a third hero kill. All right, off to the heal point and we'll move on to the next segment. All right, so we're dipping around with our longbow again. We're going to bring our Forda Brachios up. Riverlands here. I quite like bringing Forda Brachios up to where we're standing now um, because they can push into the left and sort of hold the flank. Filthy Cavalry, that's exactly what we want to fight, but they won't stick around in time for my very slow Forda Brachios to get here. Plus they're going to be scared off by those enemies. So let's see what happens here if we place them in this archway where they can't be flanked. Melting units in front of us, da 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 da, that's what braced pikes do. Turn them slightly, snipe off some of those guys from the back of the unit, push into them, and see how I'm just nudging them small amounts and waiting for them to brace again. And don't unbrace them without thinking. See those condos could have charged us. Pay attention to your flank. Melt units in front. Now see most of the damage is being done by the back rank there because I got a bit close. But see how I'm continually nudging them in very small increments? All right, and they just melt stuff. So it's important. Small maneuvers. Small maneuvers. Now the next point in this clip is uh, that how Imperial Pikes work because they will mess you up. See how they charged in those Imperial Pikes and then they went using that doctrine and then they went straight into the advance. Boom, wiped them. If you get flanked with, with brace units, you're going to take some serious damage. And those Imperial Pikes, uh, that was just magic. If we hadn't been there and been necessary to kill, they would have uh, brought them in to the left hand side there and marched all the way across the point and completely smashed through our team. Unfortunately, we were in the way and they had to take us out first. So, let's go to the summary. Alrighty, very last thing I want to show you is how to get those four Brachios from uh, the previous seasons. So we're going to press F5 and F5 is going to bring up our unit challenges. And we're going to change here back to uh, the Gilded Age. We're going to hit, hit yes, and here we are, four to Brachio Pike. Complete a bunch of challenges, and you're in. Good doctrine, that one. Alrighty, so uh, that's my uh, Night Stalker's Guide for, for Pikes for Beginners. I really hope you learned something. You know, even you experienced players, maybe there's just an odd thing that you missed. Maybe it was Watchmen have a pike. Who knows? Hope you enjoyed my video. And hey, a lot of my viewers, you aren't subscribers. If you really liked what you've seen today and you'd like to see some more, I'm making more as we go by, please smash that subscribe button, really helps the channel grow, and I'd love to do more of this to, to help you guys out. Oh, and very last, if you are an experienced player, please, by all means, I can't, I can't do everything, you know, I, I miss bits, I'm human. So if you've got some more tips, put them in the comment section below, and we can discuss them. We've had some great ones on our other videos that would be really helpful to new players, so we'd love to hear from you. Have a great day, guys. Hey guys, Knight here. Thanks for watching my videos. I make these in my spare time for a bit of fun, so hopefully you learned something or you just enjoyed watching. It would really help me out if you would subscribe and like my videos. See you on the battlefield.